Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Galfound, and I'm the VP of Operations. Uh, welcome to the ACICS Campus Accountability Report and Placement Verification Program uh, Guidelines Procedures. Um, a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, this will be um, recorded, so if you have any technical difficulties, we will post it on our website so you can listen to it. Um, I ask that you hold all questions until the end, um, and then I'll go through them. Um, I also have uh, Dr. King, who's in charge of the uh, car on the line, and uh, Ms. Ziegler, who's, uh, who heads up the PVP program. So um, again, my, con my name is Stephen Gelfound. I have my contact information on the screen if you should have any uh, questions later on or any difficulties, um, either completing the CAR or the PVP or getting into the systems, you can feel free to contact me. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the CAR. And this year, we have not changed the CAR. The CAR is going to uh, work the way it's always worked in the last couple years. You log into um, the Member Center portal. You um, click on the car. It will this year will say 2017 car. You uh, once you logged in, there'll be a link to download your uh, your spreadsheets that are all um, programs that uh, you need to submit your student data information to. You complete your spreadsheets. Um, you upload them, and once verified, it will give you um, your. Um, your, your uh, retention and placement rates as we know it at that point. Um, so some of the common errors that we have uh, with the PVP, I mean with the uh, CAR, is errors in the spreadsheet. Um, the way it works is the spreadsheet is just a way to get the student data information into our database so we can um, run the calculations on it and compare it to previous submissions. So the most important thing is anything in gray, anything in yellow, you cannot delete. Please do not alter them. That does affect the programming. Um, you can copy and paste data into it, but do not insert roll, rows or columns. That also does break the calculations. Um, and as you complete the, the, the spreadsheet on the top, um, right now it says no errors. It will tell you if it detects errors in certain cells. Um, some of the errors that we do check for, uh, the student must have a first name, last name. The student must have a student ID. Um, you must have a way into the program. Um, and if you are a graduate or completer, you must uh, put in your placement information, either not placed or waiver or how you were placed. We add up all the cells, um, all the ways in, all the ways out to make sure that they equal, either equal a 1 or a 0. 1 meaning you're still enrolled. 0 meaning that you're no longer in the program. Um, again, do not alter those. Those are automatically calculated. Um, some of the errors that we see is people, um, they've entered the information wrong. Maybe they say they were uh, a new start and a transfer in, but they never put in the transfer out. So it's two ways in, no ways out. It would be a two at the end. And uh, people say, no, that should be one. They enter a one. That will break the calculations. The spreadsheet will not upload properly. Um, again, if you see any errors on top of that spreadsheet, it will not allow you to upload. It will tell you that there is an error in the spreadsheet. You must um, correct that error. The one thing that I don't think people are aware of is much like the PVP, if you're familiar with that, you can upload the spreadsheet as many times as you want until the lock date. Um, so if you have some student data you want to figure you want to fill it out, but you may not have all the placement information in there, you can upload it. Um, make sure it uploads properly, and then once you have a placement or maybe new student information, you can um, make those changes and upload it again um, until you. Uh, submit it and then verify all the data, it's not going to lock or until the due date passes, that's when it locks. So the only two times it locks. 
So again, um, the spreadsheet, the way we've been uh, recording the data is not changed from year over year. Um, it's the same questions as last year. Uh, one of the uh, issues we did have is that the misunderstanding what we mean by schedule to graduate cohort, we do not mean the actual graduation date. The schedule to graduate cohort is when the student enrolled in the program for the very first time, they were given an expect, expected uh, graduation month and year. Um, that is what we're asking for. And uh, then we ask later on for a revised schedule to graduate cohort. And again, that would be if the student withdraw and came back in the program or they had a leave of absence. Uh, so if there was any interruption to a normal time, they, or maybe they failed a class, um, we would ask for that revised schedule to graduate. And again, when that student had the agreement there, uh, you know, what did you tell that student what their revised schedule to graduate date would be. So that's the basic of the car and how the car works um, and some of the errors that we have seen. Um, again, I would also please pay attention to the questions in row three. Uh, one of the things that we have seen in the past is uh, we ask if, this, if there is a a licensure exam and uh, associated with this program and if you say yes we're looking for information so we have seen in the past that people accidentally pick yes and don't submit never something and then you know we would follow up with some questions about what where is your backup documentation so again just pay attention to the answers um, you know please review them make sure they're correct before uploading it to the system uh, it would just uh, stop a lot of back and forth so that is the the car. Um, Dr. King, did you want to add anything about the car? Um, I think you pretty much covered the uh, the areas that have drawn the most uh, concern or uh, areas that are often um, not completed properly. Okay. Um, and the one other thing I would um, Line one was pre-populated with the program name and the credential level. Again, if that information is wrong or if the program that you see in your, in your folders of, of downloaded um, programs, you're expecting to see a program or you're not expecting to see a program, you know, please contact as soon as possible so we can make that correction. Um, make sure you have the, um, the correct spreadsheets. Also, there is a limitation. Uh, of 1,200 students per program. If you have larger, if you have a, a large amount of students in a program, more than the spreadsheet will allow you, all you need to do is contact us and we will uh, give you a spreadsheet with a larger amount of uh, students that you can enter in to make sure all the calculations and everyone's accounted for. So the changes to the car, the, as I said, the spreadsheet will not change but the frequency of submittal will change. So we are starting in 2018, we were asked for a quarterly car. Um, and so the breakdown will be from July to September will be due February and February 1st. October through December will be due May 1st. January through March will be due August 1st. And April through June will be due November 1st. Um, and again, um, you have the spreadsheets, you can fill them out, you can submit them, you know, as you have that information and keep overriding it, um, you know, as you have more information to make it more manageable or, you know, you could submit it at the deadline, whatever, whatever is your preference. Um, but you can submit the spreadsheet as many times as you want. It will just overwrite itself, um, not until you hit the submit button will actually lock. So again, you can, you know, submit these spreadsheets as often as you like until the lock period. So the next thing I will go over is the um, PVP. So the PVP and the car are very tied together. Um, the, the PVP data is used to 
verify the placements within the car. So that's why a lot of the questions are the, some of the student information is the same. So it's very important to make sure that the student information or the graduate information in the PVP, the name and the student ID number are the same in both your car submittal and your PVP. We do line up those fields to make sure that everyone who is in the car um, was submitted to the PVP. So that, that is one thing that we have seen some, some uh, issues with. Uh, so the other thing that we have done, and the PVP works the same way, you download a, a template um, that's it, listed on the top page. Um, you fill it out uh, and then you submit it uh, monthly. If you have no placements, you just click the no placements button, select from the drop down the correct month. The month defaults the month that you're in. So, um, you know, make, pay attention to that when you submit it. Uh, if you do have placements, you fill out your spreadsheet, um, you submit it. Uh, we do have multiple languages that the emails can go out in. So you select your, your language, again you pick your month, and you hit submit. Um, pay attention when you do submit it. Um, it will tell you if, the, if all the placements have been successfully uploaded in the system. Uh, some of the common errors with the PVP that we have seen is that column A is the ACICS ID number. Um, that way we can make sure that the placements are associated with the right campus. If that's blank, it will not upload. Um, every cell needs to be filled out, the same as the car, first name, last name, student ID. Um, and then, of course, that you can only be placed one way. So if those are all filled out properly, it will allow you to submit. Um, if you feel like you've submitted it all correctly and you go to upload and it doesn't upload, it tells you zero fields were uploaded, uh, I would download the template again. Uh, we may have made some changes and then you can copy and paste your information in there. The other thing to pay attention to is when you do submit, if you have 15 placements for that particular month and it says it only successfully uploaded 10, I would look at, at graduate in line 11 uh, most likely that's the error. The system will stop uploading uh, graduates on the first error. So again, if it only does half of them or some of them, I would look at that next line and see if there's something amiss with that line. The other thing that we have added is the ability to contest a result. Uh, the way it works is you upload um, your graduate information, the placement information into the system, the system automatically, immediately emails both the graduate and the employer to verify the information. Um, if, uh, if there's any contradictions or if someone doesn't um, respond, you know, we may contact um, someone, but, uh, you know, we mark it as, as uh, the staff will mark it as success, um, a valid or invalid. So if it's in marked invalid, you're allowed to come in and hit the uh, contest uh, the results. Um, what you'll get is you'll get a pop-up that um, tells you, um, you what you need to do to be able to contest that placement. You'll add some notes. You can browse. You can upload some uh, documentation and hit the submit. Um, and as you notice, when I did mine, my pop-up didn't fill my whole screen. Um, in most browsers, you can hold down the control key and tap the minus button, and it will zoom out. I'm allowing you to see the whole screen so you can submit. Um, once it's submitted to the PVP team, they will review it. And then uh, once they review it, you'll see that either they'll come back and they'll tell you successfully contested and the market verified, or they will leave it as uh, unsuccessfully and leave it as invalid. Um, and so that, that's the way that you can contest uh, uh, the PVP uh, uh, verification findings. So that's basically the, the, 
the changes that we made to PVP and how the two systems interact. Again, uh, we do check um, every placement that's within the car to make sure it has been gone has gone through the PVP system, and that the ACICS staff member did uh, verify that that was a valid placement. So that concludes the description of how the two systems work and the changes that we have that we are making to the car. Um, I will now be able to answer any questions that you may have. So um, one of the questions we have is about uh, ending population must equal the beginning population. That is, that is correct. Um, that is one of the things that we check on upload is that your ending population uh, must meet your beginning population. If it does not, you would have to contact, uh, in this case, Dr. King and ask her to reopen the car so you can make your adjustments of why there is a difference. Um, what type of documents are um, are needed to um, contest an invalid placement? So those documents would be some backup, some backup documentation um, as as to the validity of the placement. Um, if there's something, maybe the uh, employer or the student or some documentation that you may have your own um, that would be used to back it up. Again, it may um, be that if the student or the employer doesn't respond, um, you may have some information that you can show. Um, hey, Steve. I can help yes. out here. Carly. Carly. <laughs> Carly. Uh, Carly um, for the PVP, for the contesting or uh, really what we're looking for is, especially when it comes to skill placements, is the most of it. Um, we want to show that the graduate is utilizing the majority of skills that they obtain from that program, that they're using those in their current position. If that's the classification, they're placed under as skills placement. Uh, so you want to show a position description, um, showing the skills that they're using person with program description in class reference to the skills program in this position um, those are really the most common ones that we see contested okay and I know that uh, Carla was a little bit garbled there her her she was having some problems with phone we will Again, when we post this, we'll post the questions and we'll post the answers uh, to some of these questions. Um, Dr. King, there's a question about are there uh, definitions for placement and waiver categories the same in, in 2017 as they will be in 2018? Okay. Are you able to hear me, Steve? Yes, I am. Okay. We're just looking up the wild. And I believe she dropped. But yes, I mean, we have not made any changes um, for the definitions for waivers. Uh, are you able to resubmit a PVP graduate submission? If the email is inputted incorrectly, yes, you are. Um, you can contact the PVP team. You can tell them uh, the best thing to do is tell them the month and the name of the student that was uh, submitted and what the correct email address is. We can go into the system and update the email address and then uh, immediately send that graduate or the employer um, an email to verify. Um, one of the things to remember is that the system does automatically email the student in the in, I mean the graduate and the employer upon upload. There is there is no delay. So, uh, for instance, if you knew you were going to do it 
um, the last Friday of the month at noon, you could, you know, last, next time you talk to your either employers or, or um, either graduate or the employees, you can tell them, hey, to expect this email on this date around this time. Um, the system does immediately email um, out the respondents. Can a placement be contested more than once? No. No, you can only uh, contest it once. Uh, again, I would bring your best case forward about why you believe that the invalid placement should be uh, marked valid. Um, the, okay. Oh, so the meaning of the schedule to graduate cohort. So again, that is what we're looking for is when the student first enrolls in the program, what is the expected graduation date of that student? Um, and then the revised schedule to graduate cohort would be any reason that that original date has been changed, fell in a class, taken a leave of absence, transferring uh, out of the program into another program or back in again. Um, you know, any reason why that original date, we're not looking for the graduation, the actual date they graduated, we're looking for the date that they told, they were told they would graduate. Um, can I say the dates again for the new submission of the car? Yes. So July to September will be due February 1st. October to December will be due May 1st. January to March will be due August 1st. And April to June will be due November 1st. Now, I know there are some of you questions about what about placements. Again, it's any activity that happens during those, those months. So even if I have someone I submit um, in the July to September, I have them as graduated but not placed, so by February 1st they are still not placed. When October comes around, if I have them placed between October and December, I then can submit them again, keep them on the spreadsheet, and now, you know, just mark a placement category. So the whole idea is that it's not you're, you're, it's not brand new spreadsheets every time, but when you first start filling out your spreadsheet for your for your car, is your quarter over quarter, you're just building after it. So why I may be a new start in July, you leave me on there um, with just you know a new start uh, box with the one in it, and you leave me there, and then when I finally graduate or I transfer or withdraw, that's when you have to edit me. You have to edit my field again. Um, and then uh, you leave me on there until I am placed. And then you can remove and then you can remove me. And uh, so it's a living, breathing submittal. It's not we're not asking to reinvent the wheel every quarter. We're we're asking to fill out the spreadsheet once and just keep on making the delta changes um, quarter over quarter over quarter. Uh, so yes, it was. It is continuous. It's not four separate cars. The whole idea, again, is it's it's a it's a never-ending report. Uh, yes, we need all the same information for for F1 international graduates. So the the one the car that will be due November uh, in November first will be our last full twelve months 
of, of car like we have known it for many, many years. So once you submit in November, that will be the last time it will be uh, a full 12 month period after that. It will just be quarterly information at a time. And again, once that original submission comes in, uh, so once you uh, submit in February 1st, you will just be making the delta changes after that. Uh, more information, yes or phone. Again, we'll put the recording up there and we'll answer um, your, we'll put up the answers to the questions. So um, the question is, how to report on our monthly PVP a student who is continuing their education rather than getting a job? So again, that would be on the car. Um, you would show that on the car, and, and, and the PVP is only for graduates that are placed. Um, there is a section for there is a waiver category in the car that says that they're continuing their education. Um, so again, the PVP, while is tied in the verification process of the placements, uh, the PVP system is only for verifying placements. So how long does it take to uh, review a contested result again? Uh, um, the, the, the team tries to move through the process as quickly as they can. Um, ideally, they want to get done. They want to be able to verify and, and review that information within the month. Um, and they really do try to do that as much as they can. But I mean, if there is a given month where there seems to be a lot of con uh, contested results, uh, it may take a little longer, but they do uh, try to handle it um, almost immediately. So, um, Carla, are you still on the line? There was a question about uh, the placement appeal process. Yes. Uh, the placement appeals process has been replaced by the um, PVP contesting within. So where you would appeal via the email address before, you now do it through that contest button. Uh, that stage just went over. Uh, and when you do contest, um, I just want to remind everybody, please be sure to include your supporting documentation. We've had a few come in with nothing. Um, and there's really nothing we can go by for that. So there was, there was a question, uh, thank you, Carly. There was another question about the formatting of the, um, of the PVP spreadsheet versus the CAR spreadsheet when it pertains to the student uh, name. And the PVP is one line, and the and the cards it's broken up. It, it doesn't matter. It's just the way it enters into our database, and uh, we are able to match it up. As, again, as long as the name and the student ID um, match up, um, that's what that's all we're we're looking for. And if it doesn't, we'd most likely just contact the uh, institution and ask um, for for what happened. I mean, uh, you know, people do get married, uh, name changes, things like that. Um, just simple mistakes about, you know, writing down the, um, the student ID wrong. So w we do reach out.
Um, yes, it, it, someone asked if there's a question about can we, uh, a one-off, can you ask for uh, the PVP team to send an email to a student, or I mean to a graduate or employer, yes, you can contact us and say, hey, can, can you send it again? We can absolutely do that. Uh, there's also been uh, uh, some issues where uh, the browser that they use on their phone or maybe the computer doesn't support Java and that's how those buttons pop up. Uh, you, if you've seen those emails, if if they don't, if they can't use the buttons for whatever reason, they can always hit the reply button and just type in their answer. It will, it will make its way back to the system I will, um, and back to the PVP team so they can, uh, you know, research the, the validity of the placement. So yes, there was a, another question uh, about, you know, if you're doing a quarterly car now, uh, what about the placements? And again, um, you know, you can keep on, as soon as that uh, graduate is placed, uh, you just need to update the spreadsheet and, and mark in that, in that category that they are placed. That's what's most important to us is we want to make sure that, you know, every graduate is placed. So there, um, you know, we just want to make sure that does happen. Um, so if it's two submissions later or three submissions later, um, we just want to make sure that we know that that graduate was placed. Um, we will, um, you know, I can prepare um, a documentation that um, that does capture all the information that we're giving out in this webinar, um, so you have it in one place. Uh, the question is, is there a way to inform us that if an email or phone number is not valid? Um, there's no way to know if the email wasn't valid. Um, again, the system just emails it out. Um, you know, you can see as the institution, you can log back into the PVP portal, and you'll see once you submit uh, graduates, you'll you'll see next to their name um, if they've been verified or not. Um, if they haven't been verified, uh, it's because no one, the graduate or the employer, has not responded. So that's your best bet if if you've seen that a that is that graduate has not been verified and it's been you know, a week or so, um, that would be a in good indication, but we wouldn't know either. Um, you know, again, since it's an automated system, we don't get uh, bounce backs. Um, there were some um, errors in, in the um, in the 2016 car, there were a couple of different iterations. Um, so the the people who submitted very early on did have some licensure uh, information that was incorrect. We have fixed that bug, um, so that that bug has been fixed, um, and that's why it's very important when you do submit um, the car that you do pay attention, um, not only on the spreadsheet, but also on the screen when, it's, when it prints out your preliminary car, that you look to make sure all those numbers are correct and what you're expecting. So um, that, that's, um, you know, that's, that's something that's very important to do. Steve? Yes. I just wanted to add to that um, also as you're completing it and if you get error messages um, at the top of the spreadsheet as you're um, completing it to, to really take time to look at what, it, what the error message is telling you and um, if for some reason you still don't understand, you can definitely contact me. But 
you're not going to be able to upload any spreadsheet that has an error uh, message within it. The system is not going to accept it. So um, if you're unable to figure out what the error message means um, that's at the top of the spreadsheet, then you can certainly call me. Um, but I usually direct people to um, just look at the, the actual columns that are being indicated in that error message. And um, you can normally uh, figure it out as to what's causing the error. But if you can't, you can feel free to reach out to me and I'll walk you through it. Um, yes, uh, yes, please contact with any questions you may have. Um, you know, any errors, anything like that, um, we're happy to help. Um, she will be inputting uh, PVP information for any graduate from any graduating class. Um, no, um, so for the PVP, you're supposed to submit your information monthly for any graduates that have been placed in the previous month. So, um, you know, you should be doing that monthly again, no matter when they have actually graduated, but we're looking for people who've been placed in the previous month. Um, so uh, several people reported that they're not receiving the PVP email. Um, I do constantly check to make sure we're not on anyone's uh, blacklist, and the blacklist is, uh, is a list that um, different companies put out there to stop known spam. Uh, so I do look at our spam score, and I do look at our blacklist monthly to make sure we're not on anyone's um, list like that. We do use um, a valid email address, um, so it's not um, a listserv or, or a, 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 a technical solution that just sends out hundreds of emails all at one time. It's from an actual email address, so the the system acts like a person in, in sending out one email at a time. So uh, no system should see us as spam. They should all see them as individual emails. Um, but that is something I do regularly check to make sure that um, our email address is not being blocked. Um, again, if they're not receiving them, I would just look at the email address just to, to verify it. Again, we just send out the email address that, that is given to us. If there's a typo, if there's a space where there shouldn't be a space, you know, obviously it's not going to end up in the right person's inbox. Um, so, so a lot of people are saying that they, the emails end up in, in their spam. Um, so a wonderful new thing about a year ago that Microsoft, uh, per, you know, put in production into their Outlook email client is a, is a thing called clutter. And the way that clutter works is that if you don't, if you don't open up an email from a particular domain within a certain a lot of time, usually with one or two days, it, assu and it assumes that that is spam and you're not interested in reading that. So it starts to put it all into clutter. Um, so if you, if the student or graduate employer does get email a lot from ACICS and does not always read them and leaves them unread, uh, Outlook is going to start putting it in spam. Um, again, our emails are set out one at a time, so n a, no traditional uh, spam engine should see it as spam because it's not sending a bunch of emails out at one time from one email address. So that is something definitely check. And again, you know, if you know when you're going to submit the PVP, if you do it on a regular time at the same time every month when you're on the phone with your graduate or with the employees, you can tell them to check on on this certain day around this certain time. But again, you know, if there if there is an issue, uh, let us know. We can absolutely send emails out onesie twosies um, as needed. 
So what happens if a student is on a short uh, leave of absence but it doesn't uh, affect their projected graduation date? Then there's no reason to update the scheduled to graduate cohort. Um, the only reason we give you that, um, that cell is that if the original scheduled to graduate cohort was changed for some reason. So um, what happens if you submit uh, a student to the quarterly car and, and something happens and, uh, and you need to reverse that information? Um, again, since it's a, it's a four-month period and then there's a waiting time before the, the submission is due, um, that would be if a student was placed and decided they weren't placed. Again, um, you would just have to update that student record and the field will be overwritten. Um, and that, that's the way that the, the CAR works. The CAR over, automatically overwrites student data. The PVP, since we're dealing with placements, it asks you um, if you want to overwrite the data. That's the difference between the two systems. So um, if you need to update a record in the PVP, uh, it's going to prompt you to make sure you want to overwrite that, um, that the student, ha the graduate has been submitted before. Um, if not, the car does it automatically. So what happens if the student was placed and then placed again, um, and Carly jump in, correct me, but once the graduate was placed and verified, you're you're done. Um, you do, and correct me if that's if that's not correct, Carly. Um, no, if if it's been verified, then that will go down. But certainly, if you've got updated information, and depending on how it's going to be reported on your car, especially, you may want to update it. Um, if it hasn't been verified, and you find that the student has, or the, excuse me, the graduate has a new employer. Definitely update it. Um, we do get a lot back. Uh, sometimes they just mark it incorrect because either from the graduate or the employer because they're no longer working there. Um, so we don't really get a reason. We just get basically an unverified uh, from either the employer or graduate. So if you do have updated information that you can replace their previous employment with, uh, I would certainly encourage you to do that, unless, as Steve mentioned, it's already been verified and set. Well, then it, it's you can keep it that way as long as that's how you'll be reporting it on your car. Um, so yes, the the, oh, the question is if I submit a student to the PVP and the columns are blank. Um, yes, you can assume at that point. Um, next to the student graduate column, if it's blank, then yes, the student, I mean the graduate or the employee has not responded to the email. So um, the, there, there are some small windows of opportunities with the quarterly car that you could submit someone to the car that hasn't been gone through the PVP process yet. Um, and again, this is, an, this is a living, breathing car we are now going to start dealing with. So if it was submitted and it went to PVP and it was marked invalid, um, on the next submission of the PVP, you can absolutely change that. Um, you know, so, so it is, uh, um, you know, connected. So, Tehran, they're asking what type of documentation are required for medical waivers? Um, okay, so for medical waivers, <clears throat> if you have um, 
a signed attestation from a student or graduate, I should say, um, that will work. Um, an email from the graduate stating that they're uh, not able to work for health reasons. Uh, we don't require, um, obviously because of HIPAA violations, um, we can't require you to have uh, any kind of medical documentation. So uh, things, things of that nature. Um, we will be posting the uh, 2018 uh, guidelines in the next um, month or so. Do you have a Do you have a deadline for that, uh, Teron? Um, it should be out no later no later than July 1st. Um, that just gives us a chance to um, update anything regarding new new. Um, columns that may be added and adjust things, but um, by July 1st, the guidelines um, will be available um, for review. Um, so now there's a question about licensure. So for licensure, um, what we're asking for in that car reporting period, whatever your licensure agency is, is giving you that rate, what is the um, what is the most recent data? So, uh, and that's what we're asking for. So, um, well, the car data with a car backup data spreadsheet, which combines all student programs into a spreadsheet, still required. Um, no, um, uh, all that's required to fill out for the car is again the program by program uh, student information. That's what we're asking for. We're asking to fill out that information for that car reporting period of all the the changes that happened during that period in time. So no, the, the commission will not accept uh, third-party documentation for verification of placement. Um, yes, um, we can, as I said, yes, we can uh, make larger spreadsheets for programs that require them. If you know um, now, uh, that you will have a large amount of students in a particular program, please let us know. The sooner that we know, the sooner that we can get those spreadsheets ready for you, so the sooner you can complete them without having to wait. So yes, um, there there is a column um, in the in the car that asks what is the month in the year that you submitted to PVP. Again, that was added um, as another way to to verify um, to find the match between a student uh, submitted the PVP and and the car. Again, to make sure that without having to contact the institution. If we see um, a name with a close match of a student ID or a student ID match with a different name, and we can tell the month, we can tell it's the same student and there was a name change or, was, or there was a typo with the student ID. And again, it's just a way for us not to have to 
contact um, the institution. So if you do have emails that go into the spam folder, um, the best thing that you can do is you can click on that depending on your uh, mail clients, you can click on them. Most of them you can right click and say this is not spam uh, and it will remember. Um, if it's uh, an employer that constantly has this problem, I would have the employer contact their IT department and on their mail, mail server they can put the ACICS.org uh, domain in, in, uh, in their trusted list. Uh, so we'll always go into their inbox. Um, that looks like it was the final question. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Again, this, uh, this webinar will be posted and we will summarize uh, the questions and answers and also uh, the information that was detailed in this webinar. Um, so thanks everyone and, uh, and have a great afternoon. Thank you.